The Lillian McDermott Show. We love, we fear. Bridges we burn. We make mistakes. Then we live and learn. When life gets tough. And it seems like your best ain't good enough. If you're in need of hope, you know where I'll be. I'll be right here, right here. And when you need a friend, you can count on me. I'll be right here, right here waiting for you. This is the place you can always turn to when you need a friend. The Lillian McDermott Show. To reach out to Lillian, visit her on the web at whenyouneedafriend.com. Now let's all learn together. Here's Lillian McDermott. Hello, my listening and viewing friend. It's so nice we can meet each other on the air on this beautiful best day ever. And for those of you who are tuning into the classroom for the first time, please know I've been waiting for you. This is a safe place where you can go to when you need a friend. It is my commitment to provide alternative ways to heal And it is my mission to make awareness, responsibility, and truth a part of our everyday life. And I hope you, my listening, as well as my viewing friend, will feel empowered to embrace a new truth and live the life of your dreams. Now, just recently, I received a text because, you know, today I'm going to be talking to you. This is going to be the last time for this year, unless something happens where I come in during my holiday break my Christmas and New Year break. I know some people have an issue with calling it a holiday break and not Christmas, but I want to encompass everything. You know, we're just celebrating the Christmas season, the uh, New Year's, and well, many of you forget that the 12 days of Christmas epiphany is on January 6th. So I'm still celebrating the holidays way after most people in the United States are done. Like some people put their tree on the corner right on January 2nd. To me, it isn't about any of those things. It's about the spirit. And sometimes when you just take the spirit and you tie it up and just put it away before it's supposed to, I kind of think, okay, enjoy and savor every part of what's happening now. Now, it could be cultural. It could be that I grew up in a Spanish home that celebrated the 12 days of Christmas. Heck, we celebrated Fred Fred Flintstone's birthday because we celebrated everything. There's always time to celebrate. So I received this text, and I wish I could read the text. Um, Let me see if I, I did write it down here. It said, how have you been with all this insanity, is what I was asked. And I replied, um, very simply, I know who wins. I know who wins. So I'm focused, although I'm focused on the winning, the winning and who wins. We know God wins at the end of the story. But I also have to focus on the now. I have to focus let me let me let me rephrase that. I get to focus on what's happening at the moment, what's happening today, what's happening, you know, when when our friends visit and when our grandchildren visit or when I'm visiting my parents. I am there. I am in that moment. I'm not thinking about what's happening with the government, what's happening um, with all the chaos that's happening in the world, the fear. The fear that is happening in this world is so insane. It's the insanity of the world that's being forced to look like normal. And many of us are rejecting that. And that's perfectly fine. Many of us are rejecting that. I, for one, although I'm aware of what's happening, I need to be in the moment. And as a matter of fact, I asked Dr. Day, who's going to be coming on January 4th or 5th, I can't remember. She's going to be coming back and we're going to be talking about how do you make decisions for the future when there's gloom and doom upon us? 
So I hope that you will tune in and be excited about that because I want to know, I want to know, I mean, I know what I'm doing, but am I ignoring what's actually happening out there so that I can survive and thrive? Regardless, I am looking forward to 2022. And I know all of us as well, but are you waiting for the second shoe to drop? Are you focused on, you know, um, getting the perfect gift? Or are you focused on 2022 is going to be the best year ever? Are you focusing on that? Well, there's so much going on right now. Now let's focus on the now because you know, all of you who do New Year's resolutions, I like, I, I, I don't do New Year's resolutions. I make commitments to myself. And yesterday, you, you know that we talked to Sarah Payton. We talked about contracts, the contracts that we make for ourselves. Like, you know, I'll never do that again, or that will never happen to me. I will never put myself in this situation again. And so whenever that contract is broken, there's shame involved in it. There's so many different things that are involved. And so I want to, I want to encourage you to check out the conversation yesterday with Sarah Payton. It was really great. We talked about nonviolence communication, nonviolent communication, which is what we have constantly talking and shaming ourselves, belittling ourselves just in the thoughts that we think. So I want to encourage all of you, all of you to just stop and say, okay, I'm not going to make these foolish commitments for 2022 that I have no intention of keeping. But what are you willing to do? What are you willing to do to create the life that you want, to create the year that you want, to create the moment that you want? So today I want to talk to you because I am your um, teacher today. I, I, you know, it's so funny. I, I have no problem calling other people teachers, but when, when it comes to me, I'm like, oh, what am I? What am I? Who am I? What am I? What am I doing here? But the reality is I want to share from a place of, of knowing, a place that, that it's so important. And I've been practicing this even more so in the last almost two years. Because since we started studying the book of Revelation and me thinking, okay, could this be the time? Could this be the preparation time? Because I am seeing evil in the world like I had never seen before. Maybe it was always there, but my eyes weren't open to that. But once I started studying, and by the way, I just want to let you know, just plug in the book of Revelation. Christmas is right around the corner. So we have... Um, and for those of you who are, you know, I guess Hanukkah is, is past, but um, the book of Revelation, we have the online and DVD, and then we also have the 100 lessons from the Exodus DVD and online. And I know some of you have said that they want to buy it, but you can't afford it. And I want to let you know that there are really good people out there. Isla Hall has struck again. She's creating a, a scholarship account for people who would like the DVDs. And um, we'll manage the scholarship account. And when that, that monthly rate is done, then you can try again for the following month, but it's a scholarship. So it's to augment what you have. And um, so with, with learning about the New Truth series, the Book of Revelation, that puts another kink in the plans here. Okay, will 2022 happen? How, how am I supposed to make a decision? So instead of focusing so much on that, focusing on New Year's resolutions, why don't we focus on being in the moment and being gift to those we love, to be present during this time? Let's just focus on one time at uh, one moment at a time. And that way, perhaps the anxiety of the future or depression of the past or whatever is happening to you, and I hope that I am just speaking to the few, that most of you are doing what I'm suggesting, or maybe you're doing even one better, and that you can share it with me and you can post in your comments as this is airing um, tomorrow in the, uh, or as it's airing today in the premiere, it's going to be premiered because I'm going to be with my sister 
um, and I wanted to make sure I was with her. But I will read all your comments and I will reply. And if there's any questions, make sure you type in a queue and then I will respond to those as well. And um, so I started thinking, all we can do is be in the now. The now, the, this moment right now is all we have, but how do we capitalize on that? How do we make things better for ourselves and others that we love? So the first thing that I thought of, some tips that I learned from a Jack Cranfield, um, that is, I think he's the chicken soup for the soul. He had mentioned some of these things. And so I just wanted to kind of like rephrase them or repackage them because I like giving people credit. I, I research a lot and I like to learn from other people. And as a result, I bring this information to you. Some of the stuff that I share is my own personal experience and my personal solutions to my experience. And so some of this is that, and some of it is from people, the teachers that I've learned along the way. So the first thing, and, and we talked about this yesterday in the class with Susan, um, which is that you need to be in that mindset. You need to be in that mindset to, 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 to prepare yourself. And one of the mindsets that I'm thinking about is to make a commitment to remain present. What do you do? Um, how do you remain present? Well, you dive in, you play, you uh, engage, you ask questions about the other person, and, and you make a commitment to not be diving into, you know, what's the worst thing that's happening in my life? What's the, what's, what are the bad things that are happening in my life? You know, because that's sometimes what we, they say, how are you doing? Oh, well, my back hurts, my hip hurts, my head hurts, I got migraines, I just been diagnosed with, you know, this or that. That seems to be the conversation and the commonality that people choose to have with one another. I don't like that. I don't, I could be, you know, um, congested or sick or whatever. My husband asked me, how are you doing? I'm going, I am well, my body's healing. So he does, he goes like, I'm going to stop asking you. Well, you know what? If I tell myself that I am sick, I will continue to be sick. And I know that that sounds simplistic. And some of you are going to say, well, I've got this illness. Well, how about if you look at what you can do to embrace whatever the moment is at its highest level, whether it's that you were able to sit up today and talk about how you were able to sit up today one time. You focus on that one time that you were able to sit up and not the times that you were in total um, laying down, for example. Perhaps this is your last Christmas, but you can focus on all the people that you love and have loved you through all these years and make something special for them, create something special. There's so many different ways that you can put yourself in the moment, in the now. Like right now, all I am is at your service. I do have some bullet items that I do want to talk about, but I want you to know that I'm speaking to you from my heart. I want you to know that I trust God so much that I ask God to give me what I need when I need it at the moment I need it. And I believe that that's my belief. And even in the Bible, it says, you know, Jesus said to the disciples who could not heal some people in a certain place, they were saying, why, why were we able to do that? Why? And Jesus said, because you did not believe you could do it. Why is Jesus saying that? He could have said, because I am Lord and you're not because I am God and you're not. No, that's not what he said. He said, because you didn't believe you could do it. So it caused me to start thinking, what is it about my belief that creates things and suppresses things? So I was talking to someone this weekend, this past weekend, who believes they have an illness that could be terminal. That's just the belief. It hasn't been diagnosed. And I understand the waiting is the worst, but I'm like, oh, don't even talk like that. that. Don't even talk like that. And they said, but I'm a realist. Who the heck said that focusing on death is realism? What about what you're going to do while you're alive? And what about how to make 
this moment, the best moment ever. Perhaps it's simplistic. And perhaps I'm speaking from a place where I know nothing. But I will tell you this, I have been in those moments. I know what it's like to feel pain. I know what it's like to um, not know if I'll be able to do something again. And I could give you examples, but right now I'm focused in the moment. But just know that I am not coming from, I'm not just blowing smoke at you. I don't, I don't smoke. So I can't even do that. But I want you to know that we all have our crosses. But how do we carry that cross? How do we embrace that cross or that pole? If you follow Dr. Lorraine Day, it's not a cross, it's a pole. Anyway, being in the moment is all we have. And if in the moment I'm going to be dwelling on pain and I'm going to be dwelling on what I cannot do or I didn't get for 2021, and now I'm focusing on what I won't get for 2022, then that's going to be the start of something totally different and what you would be able to create. What is your belief? And remember, I've said this before, and I even created a meme for it. When something is not happening for you, it's because you have a limiting belief about it. And as Sarah said yesterday, it's a contract, it's something that you made a contract within yourself. And I remember, and I shared that moment, uh, I think it was two years ago, I was upset. I was frustrating over something that wasn't happened. Yes, I do have those moments. I do have that moment and I allow them to happen and I let them go. So I was like, all of a sudden I looked at my vision board and there it was, the word believe. And because I tore it from a magazine, I tore these words. I, I wish I could show you my, my vision board, but I tore it and then the, I noticed that the IE in the word believe was in red. The word was white. All of it was white, except the IE was red. And all of a sudden, I saw a lie. And I thought, whoa, what is the lie at the center of my belief that is keeping me from what I want? So get to sit with it. What is the lie about the moment for you? What is the lie? Or better yet, what is the new truth about the moment that you're experiencing right now? Like when I went to care of my parents, this could be their last Christmas. I can focus and dwell on that. Or I can say, we sang with our best, best heart and our best voices. That was my moment. And yes, I couldn't look at my dad when he started crying, but that is the moment. Oh, and I couldn't look at my sister when she started crying. But you start focusing, you make these commitments. I am going to be in the moment. And what is your moment? Whatever it is that you want to create at that moment. So make a commitment to remain present. So if somebody says, how are you feeling? I am great because right now I'm with you. How would that sit with you as opposed to, oh, the doctor told me, well, you know, what does the doctor know sometimes, right? What do they know? Your body has an ability to heal. So talk about how great your body has supported you, how your body wants to heal, but what are you willing to give your body to complete the healing process? So that's number one, a commitment to remain present. Then number two is to develop a system. It's a reminder, an alarm system. If you find yourself struggling with anxiety or depression, if you're anxious, then that's focused on the future, which hasn't happened yet. So you really don't know how it's going to pan out, do you? If you're depressed, then you're dwelling on the past. Name one person other than fantasy world where you can go into a portal, change the past, come back and go, oh my gosh, I messed it up again. Let me go back there again. You've seen those movies, right? Back to the Future, uh, Narnia stuff, where you open a door and all of a sudden you're like transported into another world. That's not the world I live in. The world I live in is right now, right here. And so if you set up some systems, if you find yourself depressed, 
because you know of the past how can you learn to embrace it and then that's what i'm going to say to you could you would you be willing to sit with the concept to attend the workshop the new true series i am the solution and by the way i'm going to write this down because i just decided i was going to do this i am going to give away one seat of the I am the solution It's going to be a um, Christmas gift to one person, but you need to be available January 14th, 15th, and 16th, 2022. And if you go to my website at when you need a friend.com, please subscribe. When you go to my website, you need to check everything out because last time I did this, someone said, Oh, I need this. I need this. I will. I'm like, no, you deserve it. You don't need it. You deserve it. For those of you who are watching now and later on, um, and I'm going to pick the name, um, probably, uh, before January 6th, I'm not going to tell you when, so keep trying. If you're listening on podcast, if you're watching on BitChute, Odyssey, uh, Facebook, YouTube, whatever it is, I want you to text me or email me because this is virtual. So if you're anywhere around the world, just know you will be dealing with Eastern time. And so with the Eastern time, um, it's um, 6 to 9 or 10 on Friday, noon to 6 or 7 p.m. on Saturday and Sunday. So those are the days that you need to be available. This person didn't even read the free gift that we gave them. So you got to make a commitment that you're going to be a part of all the sessions. And even if it comes, becomes really squirrely and you don't want to deal with whatever it is that that emotion or whatever, that you are going to stick it out because after the sunset comes the sunrise after breakdown is breakthrough. So if you want that, that'll be a Christmas gift that I am going to be giving to whoever texts me or emails me, email me at lily at when you need a friend.com or at 407-373-5959 and text me. I am the solution. And just tell me you're available January 14th through 16th. And Dr. Day will be a part. She will be a presenter on Saturday. So make these reminders on how to um, to be in the moment, a reminder to breathe, a reminder to, and set your, you know, a lot of people have these calendars and they don't use it on their phones. I'm telling you that if you have a smartphone and you're not using your phone as reminders, there's something wrong. There's something wrong. You're not utilizing it. You're sabotaging yourself. You're not utilizing a tool that has been given to you. And you can set a, a very simply, you can customize your reminders to go off every 30 minutes, every day of your life to say, be in the moment, just remind you to be in the moment. And you get that chime and that chime, just like Pavlov's dog, bing, you're salivating all over the place. So remind yourself to stay in the moment. And how do you do that? You set the reminder, or when you hear of a need, you can say, okay, let me help you. Let me, let me listen to you. Let me love on you. Let me be on this moment with you. Let's laugh together. Let's dance together. Dancing, that's why we dance, is to get in the moment. And for those of you who say, oh, this is cheesy, the worst, whatever, that's fine. That's your opinion. And when you have your classroom and when you have your show, you can put on whatever you want to do. But to take the time to write that, that tells me more about you than it does about the cheesy little jingle that somebody wrote for me. But that gets me in the moment so that there's nothing that matters. It doesn't matter if the bills aren't getting paid. It doesn't matter if my stomach is empty. It doesn't matter. Well, it matter matters if I have to go to the bathroom and I'll speed it up a little bit more. But, but that is, those are the things that it just doesn't matter. I am here. I am right now. And especially when you are with family and friends for the holidays and you have those people who know how to poke you in the eye. <laughs> and we're not just talking about Dr. Lorraine Day. We're talking about people who just are miserable. 
see their beauty, compliment them, give them a reason to smile. Make that a, you know, it's, it's not your responsibility or your job to make somebody happy. But when you do choose to think about somebody else or to help somebody through, it does, you receive more than you give. That is just absolutely my experience. So develop a reminder, set a five a, a minute alarm to breathe, to relax, to, to be present in the now. And then another thing that you can do is that you can become aware of your body. Sometimes when I'm preparing for a class and I really am like, I've got a lot of deadlines, got to finish my blog, I've got someone coming over or, you know, like, like this last Sunday, I not only um, drove an hour and 15 minutes to Carol and organized caroling for my parents. I didn't know. I also had a group of people coming to my house. So when we finished, we needed to rush back so that 10 of our friends could come and have and enjoy a meal. Let me tell you, I had a meltdown. I had a meltdown because I was giving and giving and giving, and I did not replenish. And we were so tight on the time that here I am going to be entertaining all these people and nothing was getting done. And the girl that was going to help me um, set up and everything, she had phone troubles and she didn't know she, she, we weren't communicating with one another. So, but it all worked out. But what did that meltdown teach me that I'm not doing what I deserve. I am not doing because it's been since we went to Tennessee, which was um, at the end of, of October, we have been going and going and going and going. And you know what has been sacrificed? My time with God. I'm just being honest with you. So perhaps maybe that reminder is to breathe God's breath or to, to just read a, a scripture verse, have them pop up on your phone. There's a way that you can do all these things, figure it out. Okay, so develop a reminder. So, okay, be aware of your body. So what I was talking about is that little meltdown that I had. Yes, I was depleted. I figured out that I was depleted and I needed some alone time. I needed to replenish. I am going to go to the beach and walk on the beach there's so many different things that I know I can do, but I put myself last. And I always tell the people I coach, give me the five. And I want you to do this right now. And if you're new to the classroom, you'll probably do this for the first time. But if you're not new to the classroom, you've probably done this already um, because I've done this many times before. So name the top five people in your life. Who are the top five people? And some people say, oh, well, I have four kids. Can I, can I put children in one category? Sure. Grandchildren? Yeah, put them on one category. Yeah, husband, spouse, significant other? Yeah, put them on one category. I'm hoping there's just one person there. But in one that category. And my parents, yeah, put them in that category. So you may have more than five people, but what are those? Who, who are your five? And so if you want to text me those five, that'll be good. Or I can tell you, the rest of the, the the rest of it. Just text me if you want to know what the five. You text me your five, and then I'll and I'll respond to you. Okay. So become aware of your body. I knew I was pushing my body. I knew, and when I had my little meltdown because I didn't I didn't know if my guests were going to arrive before I arrived at my house, and I didn't have any of the appetizers out. And and but you know what? If they're my friends, they would have come in with me and they would have helped me set up. But because I put that pressure on myself without having that abundance, because I was giving from an, I was giving without replenishing, it became bigger than it had to be. I'm just being honest. It happens to all of us and it's okay. It was a lesson for me. <clears throat> it was a lesson for me to be able to take care of myself. This is a busy time for me between everything that I'm doing, plus the Christmas caroling, plus the weddings that we've gone to and the on location stuff and all of that. 
<coughs> excuse me, um, all of that, that is, um, all of that is just adds up. It just adds up. So identify how your body is feeling at this moment. Is somebody stressing you out? Allow yourself to go, okay, this is how I'm feeling right now. How can I shift? What can I do not to hook? I want to be in my essence and I want my essence to engage with their essence as opposed to my ego, because that's what happens when you don't replenish. That surplus is your ego, like going, oh, I, I, I can't give, I can't give anymore, I can't give anymore. So figure out a way to become aware of your body and be able to um, meet your body's needs, meet your own needs. I know that we want to meet everybody else's needs, but it's very important that you meet your own needs first. Then number four is remain conscious of your thoughts and keep them positive. Again, when I say to you that people are coming to you and saying, you know, how are you feeling? Well, my back hurts and this and that and all that's happening. Be ready to maybe write down every night before you go to bed all the things that you are grateful for, all the wonderful people in your life. Maybe somebody smiled at you or maybe somebody gave you 10 bucks because they just wanted to give you 10 bucks. You know, it doesn't matter. Just write down, keep a gratitude journal. If that's going to help you, then then do whatever it takes, because that's what we do. We wish for things to be come our way, but then we're not willing to do whatever it takes to attract it in our life. I don't know if that makes sense. Give me the thumbs up or whatever. Um, and make a comment or whatever you think about that. So remain conscious of your thoughts, because many times, as you know, um, many of the thoughts that are mine, 80% of our thoughts 90% of our thoughts are repetitive, by the way, and 80% of our thoughts are negative. What could go wrong? Well, how did that get in there? Because we were taught from, don't do that, don't do that, you can fall, you can hurt yourself, you know, be careful, they might hurt you, um, they, they're not good for you. All these things have become part of our warning signal. And it was there when we were kids to protect us, but now it hurts us. So, be open and curious and just enjoy. And when you feel that your thoughts are changing, it's time to shift. Rely on that to, reminder to help you shift. So an, a, a time in my life where um, I, I was rear-ended, you guys know I was rear-ended and um, in my car. And um, as a result, I had four herniated discs and they said I needed surgery. And that's the time when you're like your surgery on your neck, four herniated discs, what's going to happen here? But I knew God would heal me when I needed it and how I needed it. And God would give me the tools. Well, this is something that if you go to my little shop now bag at when you need a friend.com, you'll see something called first alternative therapies. And there's a little thing called Avazia. And I talk about this in my shop now bag. And this is called Avazia. <coughs> excuse me. And what Avazia is, is microcurrent technology with a memory chip. This comes with different attachments. Let me tell you, when my doctor, and I love my doctors because they know, I know my body heals. And anytime I had pain, I would attach two of these things with, with in here and I'd put it in my little pocket and I'd walk around with it. I'd work with it. I did a lot of things. Sometimes I needed to isolate the pain and it has a little Y bar. And I happened to buy this. I have worked with this product for, and I bring it to my doctors, <coughs> excuse me, for probably five years prior. And I had just bought one for myself so I can present it. I used to borrow it whenever I needed it, but then I bought mine. And um, let me tell you, six months or three months later, I was rear-ended. I lived on this. I never took a pain pill not even a Tylenol. And when my neurosurgeon said, um, what do you want? What do you want to do? And I said, I'm going to heal naturally. I'm going to heal naturally. And anytime I have pain anywhere in my body, 
I haven't taken a Tylenol in probably 10, eight, eight years, maybe nine years. That's when I started changing my life and eating differently and all of that. Um, and so I wanted to share with you that there are ways, there are alternative ways to heal. I know Dr. Day goes, there's only one way to heal. Yeah, but all the, I wanna meet you where you're at. This is where I don't, I'm not gonna take a pain pill and I don't wanna be in pain. So that sends signals to the brain of healing. We're gonna to heal together. We're going to work things out and it does. I don't know how it does it, but those are anytime I felt pain, I thought, I know how I'm gonna fix this. I know God is in me. God is going to heal me. And I also have my Avazio machine. And by the way, if you decide that you want one too, just mention my name and they'll give you free shipping. And that's like a 50 or plus dollar value, depending. So free shipping. So I just wanted to let you know about that. So um, be aware of your surroundings. So that would be the next one. So be conscious and keep your thoughts positive. Do whatever it takes. You know, you realize I'm a funk. I'm in a funk. I'm in a funk. Okay. I'm going to shift. I'm going to shift and I'm going to be grateful and I'm going to thank God. I'm with whatever it is that, and, and use those reminders that you're going to get every five minutes, every 30 minutes, whatever it is to help you keep that commitment to stay present in the moment. So then be aware of your surroundings is number five. Be aware of your surroundings. There are so many things. I remember one year I was in my thirties when Robert and I first met and got married shortly after that. And he took me skiing for the first time. And I remember going down the mountain so fast because I didn't have any control. And Robert would say to me, slow down, check out the view. And I'm like, what view? And I was going down the mountain because I did not have that control. That's how sometimes we go through life. And so what I want to encourage you is that I want you to slow down, and I'm listening to my own advice, by the way, slow down and take in. Whenever you're feeling that, that oh my gosh, this is, this is too much for me, and you're going to shift, you're going to be grateful, you're going to think about, you know, you're going to breathe, breathe in Jesus, breathe out, because the same breath that Jesus breathed into his disciples, we have that breath too. So breathe in that breath, follow that breath all the way down and all the way up until it leaves you and use that, count it, do whatever you can to be aware of what's happening and you shift and, and say, oh, look at that tree. I never noticed that tree before. Oh, let me drink this water. Oh, this water tastes so good. When you touch something, when you dance, when you, you become part of that moment, if you are having a meltdown, or if you're panicking, or you're not being grateful at the moment, drink some water, feel the water, ooh, feels cool in my mouth, it feels, you know, um, it, 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 it's cool, and it, and it just quenched my thirst, feel everything about it, and all of a sudden, you're in the moment, try that, Try that if you ever, just, just be grateful for the mountains, the beach, wherever your surroundings are. Look at that leaf, watch the birds fly by and just get involved in that moment. And when you are, when you're involved in your surroundings and when you, when you start, you'll start replenishing the bank account and do as I say, not as I do, right? I too need to listen to this advice. It is no excuse that we don't make time for ourselves. By the way, if you've already answered, who are those five people? Where are you in those five people? Are you the first one? Because <clears throat> that is what we need to do. We need to be completely start with ourselves. And whoever said <clears throat> that if you think about yourself first, you're selfish, didn't know what they were talking about. They were lied to. When you give to yourself first and you could give from others from a place of abundance, ah, oh, that is where the, the, all the things that happen in life are sweeter. Okay. And then the last thing and aware of your surroundings. And then the last thing is enjoy being with your, where you are, <clears throat> enjoy being where you are. 
So where are you right now? You're hopefully watching the classroom. Just enjoy the dance. You don't have to be critical about the music. Because again, when you are critical, you tell me more about you. Because wherever you show up, how you show up in the classroom is how you show up in the world. How you show up in your marriage, how you show up with your family, how you show up at work, that is how you are. Because it also says in scripture, it's not what you bring in, it's what comes out of you that defiles the person. It's what comes out of you. And what do you get when you squeeze an orange? I hope you know the answer to this, orange juice. Why? Because it was what's in it. So when, when people are critical and they're, you know, like they love the show, but they want to be critical about it. Or they, they love this, but they, oh, I hate that music. I, I had to turn it off. Okay, fine. I don't, whether you like me or not, it doesn't devalue me. Whether you like the music or not, it doesn't devalue me. Why? Do you think that your opinion was so important that what was your goal? What is the goal? So always be aware, not just about your surroundings. Just be aware of where you're at. Why do you feel the need to be critical? Why do you feel the need to rain on somebody's parade? Is it because somebody did that to you? And if they did, I am so sorry. But today is a new day. And that could be rewritten. Those lies can be rewritten. And that's why I'm so excited about the classroom. Never in a million years that I think that this would be my calling. I use the mic to sing. I use my body to dance. That's how my life was before I started doing the radio show back then, <clears throat> and today, the classroom. Don't you like my new classroom set? I love it. And if you don't, that's okay too. It doesn't matter to me. Because I know my intention, my motivation, <coughs> excuse me, and I know what my calling is. I know what it is. And I'm going to focus on those who really, truly love and want to be a part of this and is accepting the gift of a free gift, by the way, a free gift of information, a free gift of information that wasn't given to me and I'm almost sure wasn't given to you. When I would fall down, my mom would put stuff on my body. Oh, and here's some Neosporin, here's a Band-Aid, here's all these things that, you know. Now, when the kids come over, my grandchildren come over, I get out the, the colloidal silver. And, you know, if they have a fever, I'm not so concerned because I know the body is doing what it needs to do. These are all things that we need to be grateful for and, be, and, and say, gosh, I'm just going to enjoy this moment with Lily McDermott because she's giving of her time. The teachers are giving of their time and we're all learning together. So again, I don't wanna focus on the negative comments because you know, it is what it is, but you need to ask yourself, why do I feel the need to be so critical and why do I feel the need to be um, kind of like reject the gift of the power of information, of informed choice, of new truths? But most of you, most of you is who I focus on. I focus on all of you who are dancing with me. I'm focusing on you who are laughing with me. I'm focusing on all of you who see the value of this moment. But I know that all of you also have your own moments with your family, the things that you do that may or may not be appreciated, the things that you, how you love that may be misunderstood. But at that moment, just like I do, we need to sit back and say, I'm giving it my all. I know that I am loving people that I don't even know. 
I, I get emails from people that have said, thank you for changing my life. Changing, you know, thank you for this information. I didn't know this information. That's not me. That's God. God puts you at the right place at the right time. And for that, we get to all be grateful. Our conversations that I've had for the last 10 years have changed my life. Had I not been in the classroom, I probably would have had surgery for my neck. I probably would be eating foods that are still causing me to have hives in my body or taking asthma medication. I was taking a lot of asthma medication. I probably would have had my gallbladder out. And, you know, I think about, you know, all the things, all the different things that we have going on in the workshop, in the, in the classroom. And I want to name some because I really am proud of what God has done for us together. I can't take any credit. I am, I just say yes to God. I say yes to God and God knows I say it with an honest and loving heart. And because of it, we've got the DVDs. And by the way, these are great Christmas gifts. Give the gift of information of God. I mean, how many, how many things do we ever share that have nothing to do with God? And they're not even, you know, things that lift people up. But this is the powerful information with Dr. Lorraine Day, the 100 lessons from the Exodus, which, by the way, started as 50, and, and now they're 100 plus. And so think about it. And we can also get it online. So the online version is cheaper. And then because of Isla Hall, if there's, if, if there's a price issue, there's a, there's a, like if you can't make all of it and you really want the DVDs, and this is what she wanted to do, is she wanted to augment, supplement, you know, and once that money is gone every month, that until the, the donations stop, <clears throat> then we can't do that anymore because we don't have the margins. But because of Isla Hall, we do. So for those of you who are looking to, this is her tithing. And I thought this is so beautiful. And she combined her tithing by supporting the classroom with giving the good news about God. What, how beautiful is that? How beautiful is that? Okay, so that's things that we're doing so that we also have upcoming events oh and that gallbladder thing that i didn't have removed we all did that together we did we did this together and now we have it for you so if you're having some issues with your health and you want to clean out your liver and clean out your gallbladder um we have it all videotaped and you can purchase it and it'll be sent to you and with that you get some time with me as well because I want to make sure that you feel comfortable with this and doing it with the the video you watch the first video and you do, you keep doing it until you feel um you go through the three-day fast and then the one-day cleanse amazing amazing um we also have uh, upcoming events we have the I had mentioned the new truth series I am the solution please consider we're giving one away so make sure you text me for that we also have um, uh, Dr. Um, uh, Bradley Nelson. So Dr. Bradley Nelson with the um, the Emotion Code is in Cocoa Beach, Florida. I am looking forward to meeting all of you. We've had so many people that are coming down that, from all over. I, I think it's great, not just from Florida. They're coming from all over. Today we we sold two Indiana uh, VIPs. So hey. This is just wonderful, wonderful that people want to deal with their past. They want to focus on their future and their present and their now. And they just want to say, okay, whether this is my trauma or my ancestors' trauma, I'm going to learn how to get rid of that trauma. So I want to encourage you to do this right away because I think the early registration will be done soon. So if you're thinking about doing it, do it. So just do it. So um <clears throat> Also, we have Dr. Thomas Levy, who is in love with Dr. Levy. Everybody, everybody's in love with Dr. Levy. So he's doing, you know, instead of having one hour with Dr. Levy, you get six hours on a Sunday, February 6th. I, uh, and, and by the way, Dr. Uh, Bradley Nelson, that's January 29th. And so make these plans. Say, I don't want a gift for, I don't want a present that's, I'm gonna, or food or whatever. I want to go to this event because it's the gift that keeps on giving. And then Dr. Thomas Levy, um, that is also um, going to be, um, uh, that's going to be virtual, just like the workshop. That's going to be virtual. And so his is um, 
on February 6th, and that's from noon to 5 p.m. I believe that those are that's the hours of, of operation. But there's going to be Q and A. You'll be able to ask your questions now. Who 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 told you ever that you can nebulize hydrogen peroxide? Right, vitamin C. We talk about vitamin C a lot. Thank God for this information and the teachers in the classroom. Thank God that I was led. It was like, okay, God said, okay, I'm going to focus you because you were going everywhere. I was going everywhere. And so I am focused on knowing these new truths. And I want to help. I want to give this gift back to you. And that's what we're doing in the classroom. And then I also have to say thank you to all. Uh, there's another gift. Okay. As you know, all the beauty products I use are Keep Me Safe Organics. I love Keep Me Safe Organics from head to toe because of all the chemicals that are, are in beauty products. Check them out. I think there's like 1,200 chemicals that are approved in the United States that are banned in Europe and other places in the world. So we're buying all these products, but guess what? We're putting toxins and chemicals in our body. So if you're all of a sudden gaining weight and you're eating pristine and you can't figure out what's going on and you've worked with your emotional trauma, check out the ingredients, you know, um, keep me safe organics. And they are donating one lipstick. And these are the top 10 ingredients that you need to avoid when you are purchasing um, your beauty products. But I'm going to show you this. Keep me safe again. Well, we were challenged. We were challenged to find a lipstick without any synthetics. There's one synthetic, which is um, B wax, wax, B, <clears throat> B wax, B wax. And it's a synthetic version because if there's beeswax in here, then it's not considered vegan. So this is vegan and it is synthetic free. Look at this. This one is called um, pink tot, no, hot toddy. Look at this color. This is called hot toddy. And um, <clears throat> let me show you. So, so one of you, if you guys want the lipstick, just put lipstick. And then one of you is going to be selected for this one. This one is called um, Bellini. So look at this one. This is called Bellini. So tell me the one you prefer, but I don't know which one they're going to give. This one's pink lady. I love pink lady. Look at this one. Isn't that pretty? Isn't that pretty? This one's called Pink Lady. So they're going to be giving away, <clears throat> keep me safe again. And, and if you go to whenyouneedafriend.com and you click on to the Keep Me Safe Organics logo and you finish, complete your order or um, <clears throat> you get 10% off if you enter Lily 10. And this, oh, I'm going to wait for this one. This is my favorite. You'll know what it is. I think you all know what it is. And this one's called Sugar Plum. So this is Sugar Plum. Imagine when you are putting on lipstick, you're putting petroleum products, you're putting um, other chemicals in here that you are lip licking and it's going right into your mouth. Okay, so here's, this is my last, <clears throat> this is my last one. People have asked me, how are your teeth so white? What you do is you get red lipstick. So this is my favorite. This is called Cosmopolitan. So this is what I have on right now, but this is Cosmopolitan. And um, so, um, one of you will get, so you need to text me at Lily at when you need a friend. And this is for United States only. They cannot ship outside of the United States. Mm, I think, and, and if they do, I, I don't think they can ship. So this is for the United States um, only. Uh, you can text me at 407-373-5959 or email me at Lily at when you need a friend .com. Just put on there. I want the lipstick. Keep me safe organics. Uh, and then I will put you in the winner's basket. And then I will select these gifts on the 23rd. I am going to be on, no, the 21st is, um, I'll be with Tim. Uh, I don't know if you remember Tim Ray. He's in Good Morning Atlanta. And I'll be on Good Morning Atlanta from 920 to 940. And we're going to be talking about Jesus. Ooh, I wonder, wonder why they picked me for this one. But I'm grateful for that. And so I will pick all these um, gifts, like the I am the solution on the 23rd. Mm, I, I'm, no, I'm not going to pick it on the 21st. So the 23rd, I'm going to write the 23rd, and I will let you know which one you won. And let's see. So that's for the Keep Me Safe Organics. Oh, and then I have to tell you, these are wonderful gifts. The B3 bands, I'm telling you, 
I still have muscle. And I, I must be honest with you, I have not been working out because I've been so busy, but I still have muscle. Um, I went and worked out again because I used to say, you know, muscle has memory. And I used to jokingly say, I think my muscles have dementia because they never got back after my accident. I got so behind on my working out. I couldn't work out because of all the pain. And um, so um, when I started using, I never, even when I was at my heyday and working out all the time, I never built muscle up in the body, up upper body. I didn't have those muscles there. I didn't have them because they had dementia. And, but my legs were always strong because as a dancer, um, I learned how to keep my muscles strong. And, but you put these bands around your arms and your legs and you tighten them up and you pump them up. And I've shown you before how to use these, but these are just great. You just put them on your arms and you put them right where the arm meets, your arm meets right there and you tighten it up and you pump them in. And um, when you do five pounds, it's like the equivalent of 15, but the body is like psyched. It, it, it believes that it's doing more because of the oxygen level that is coming in through the veins is as if you were working out much harder. So because I am such a weakling when it comes to you know, working out with dumbbells to me, five pounds or two, this was like with two and a half pounds, I, I built this muscle, but to me, that's, that's even more uh, appealing to me than the, than um, having to work out with 15 pounds. I, I would probably just do maybe one rep. <laughs> so, but now I feel strong because of B3 band. So go, go to the shop now bag and check out some of those things. And um, of course, there's other things that you can look at, like BrainTap. There's a free trial for BrainTap. And I've got some products for ground therapy. I stopped using them directly because they were taking my clients and, or my, my, my members, the people that are, were. So I started buying my own product and you can get it on my own website. And when you do that, it helps out the classroom. So everything that I make, I put it back into the classroom because it is, and, and, and thank you to all of you <clears throat> who contribute, all my contributors, all my student enrolled students in the classroom, people that are saying, you know, I don't belong to church anymore, or I, I just want to tithe. And they're tithing <clears throat> to the classroom. And I'm so grateful to all of you. So I just want to say thank you for that. <clears throat> and if you are looking to donate to the classroom, whether it's $1 or $1,000 a month, whatever you can donate, I am just grateful. Whether it's your time, your talent, your treasure, sharing this video, that is being a part of giving. Whatever you can give, we've heard of the widow's might. So whatever you can give, please give. And that way, I mean, I don't worry anymore. I, you know, Dr. Jennifer Grameth, who is going to be on tomorrow, um, I absolutely adore her. I wasn't going to do any more sponsors. I was not going to do any more sponsors until she asked me. I didn't even approach her, but I absolutely adore her. I believe in what she's doing. And she does such a great job that I said, yes, you can become a sponsor. So at least I know that that is a consistent in the classroom. But to have all of you say, don't worry, we're going to donate, whatever it is. You can donate on BitChute. You can donate on Odyssey. You can donate at whenyouneedafriend.com, PayPal. Um, I think there's Zelle. I mean, there's so many different ways that you can help the classroom grow so that you can continue being in the moment with me when we start our little dance. As silly as it is, it puts you in the moment. And yeah, you, you can be self-conscious and that's why you don't like other people dancing. But little by little, just like I tell Dr. Day, just, just bob your head, just, just bob your head. And I know she loves doing it, even if she says she doesn't. But there's just so many different ways that we can make this holiday season meaningful and not focus on what could happen in 2022 but really focus on what's happening now. And uh, January 4th, I'm going to have a, a, a class. I think I'm, that's a class that I'm going to be doing, but I'll still be celebrating. I'll still be celebrating Christmas at that time because I celebrate the 12 days of Christmas. So I'm taking some time off, much needed rest um, because, you know, and I've said this to you before, and I'm going to say it again, for every five minutes of anger, 
that you have, eight hours, your immune system is suppressed. It weakens your immune system for five minutes, eight hours. Think about that. Well, when I had my little meltdown, because <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, people are going to get there without, you know, and I was so like, and I, I was thinking, yeah, that probably lasted maybe half an hour <laughs> of, of me emoting. It lasted about half an hour. So all of a sudden I'm sniffly and, but I know that my body is great. I, I know that this was a moment for me to remember how my body responds and honors me but I need to honor my body. What are you doing to honor your body? What are you doing to be in the moment? And you know, um, with, because it's the last class I did before this one, Sarah Payton, um, we talked about nonviolent communication. And we talk about this in the classroom, but I never called it nonviolent communication. So there's, um, and I, I believe his last name is Marshall. Marshall... Maybe his first name is Marshall. Yeah, Marshall. Can't remember his last name. Oh, I, I I can. Let me see. This was on my page, so I didn't want to do this. Okay. So it his name is Marshall. <laughs> That's funny. Rosenthal, Rosen Roosevelt, or something like that. If if I could show you what my handwriting looks like, then you'll go, what the heck did you just write? Okay. Um, so I thought I could read it, but obviously not because I wrote it so quickly because I, I know because I've been, I've been looking at his work and I am trying to find my stuff here. I will, you know what? I am a great researcher and I am going to tell you the name because I have it right here. Hold on a second. His name is, okay, hold on. Um, oh, geez. It's just spinning, so it's not gonna let me do it. Okay, that's fine. I will put it on there. I think it's Rosenthal, Rosenberg, Rosenberg, Marshall Rosenberg. Yeah, you see, God gives you what you need at the moment you need it, when you need it. <clears throat> and I believe that, I believe that. And for many of us that are Christians and we walk around, oh, it's doomsday, it's the end of the world. And yeah, just wait till it happens, but it's not today. Maybe it will be later, but right now, it's not happening right now. And one of the, um, <clears throat> the, the tips that I was giving you and remaining in the moment is enjoying wherever you're at. Enjoying wherever you're at. And so um, Eckhart Tolle tells a story of a time that he was in line and people were getting impatient. I mean, the line was long and people were getting impatient because it was a long process. And he gets whenever, whenever Eckhart Tolle, and I don't know if you know who Eckhart Tolle is, but look him up, A New Earth. That was a great book that I read that was life-changing. And um, Eckhart Tolle gets to the front of the line and the woman says, thank you for your patience, for, for waiting so patiently. And he said, well, I wasn't, I wasn't waiting. Waiting means that you're not where you like, you're supposed to be like somewhere else. Like I am waiting right now so that I can be in the front of the line. Like my goal, I'm right here, but I'm not happy until I get to the front of the line. So basically he said, no, I, I wasn't waiting. And the woman said, of course you, you were in the line, weren't you? And she goes, yeah, I was in the line. And he, and she said, but, but you, you were waiting, right? And he goes, no, no, I wasn't waiting. I was, I was enjoying wherever I was at. He was in that position. Then he was in this position. And this, wow. What a great story. What a great way to pass the time, to embrace every moment where people can be angry, somebody cuts you off in line, you know, all those things. He was like, no, I wasn't even waiting. I was enjoying where I was. Think about it. How many times do we do that to ourselves? It's not what it's supposed to be. Let me tell you, what God ordains for you, no one can change. And if you are able to change it, it's because that was what you needed to do. So figure out that balance and start with yourself because the problem comes when you try to change everybody else but you. See, I was really good at that when I first, like as an empathic person, 
I knew how to fix everything. That's a gift. It is a gift, but it's also a curse because everything is fixable. Everything is fixable. Some people don't want to fix things. And I poke them in the eye. And some people just want to vent. They don't want to go to the solution. That's my strength, but it could also be a weakness if I use it incorrectly. And so I've learned to ask permission. I've asked, oh, is this something that, are you venting or do you want to, or is this something that you want to blah, 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 you know? And so those are things, those are different tips that you can, like, if you're listening to somebody just complain or brag about themselves or, oh yeah, we just know about your next yacht that you're buying or be happy for them. Good for you. I'm so excited for you. Why would anybody go, oh God, here they go again, bragging about their stuff? No, they've reached great accomplishments. Rejoice with them because they might invite you in that boat or they might invite you to their beach house or they might invite you to their, their vacation or they may want to invite you on their plane ride. Whatever it is, rejoice with them. And if you have an aunt who's intolerable, or that, that just is very demanding, just say what you're willing to do. Well, I, I can't do that right now, but I'm willing to do this. I can't do that, but I, I'm willing to do this. So there's so many different ways that we can, instead of obsessing about what we can't control, make the gift of your presence be the best gift ever. The gift that you say, I am here with you. The dishes, the dirty floors, everything, none of that matters. Because let me tell you, if you had one week to live or one day to live, would you be cleaning your floors? I know some people that would. Because what would people think? It's time to give that up. It's time to give up all the things that don't support you anymore. Perfectionism, give it up. Control, give it up. Multitasking, not real. Multitasker, anyone who tells me they're a great multitasker, I'm a great multitasker. I'm telling you, I am a great multitasker. That's what I thought. I, 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 I do, but I am aware that that, that is not necessarily the way for somebody else to do it. I'll start on a project. I'll move on to the next, work on that project, move on this project. I'll work on this. But every time I'm doing it, I am solely focused on that. And then I come back because I get bored. I, I, I work on different projects, but I'm working on them, working on them where I'm not working on this, thinking about that. I'm not saying, oh yeah, I'm listening to you because let me tell you, you're not listening. I'm telling you right now, you're not. And you go, uh -huh, uh -huh, I'm listening. No, if you can identify with that, stop lying to yourself. You're not listening. And Robert and I have this rule. If I'm typing on the computer and he comes in and talks to me, he stops. And I stop and I turn and I go, yes, what is it? He wants me to listen. And those are different ways that we can help one another grow. We can help one another grow. And I also, speaking of growth, we're doing a contest for the emotion code. And so if you want to do this one, um, just start doing it because that class is going to, it's going to be for next week. But we decided that we are going to um, have on January for uh, January, January 4th, we're going to do a pre-record with Dr. Bradley Nelson, and he is going to do a couple of conversations with some of you. So if you want to be a part of that, this is what you need to do. You need to tag three people, tag three people, and you can start with this class right now. Um, you can tag three people, and, um, and then you need to share, like find the emotion code information, share the emotion code information, and let me know that you've done it. If you, if you tag the classroom um, and, and tag, you know, maybe a Bradley Nelson classroom, but let us know, just, just do this one, just do this one and then do the class with Bradley Nelson. And I think that's gonna be airing um, the, 4th of January. I think it's going to be airing the following week, but it doesn't matter. I need for you guys to promote 
the emotion code. We're really excited. Um, and so it's like tag three people and you can start if you want to get in the, and it, for every three people you tag, you will get in, you will, you will get one name in the winner's basket. So if you tag six people, that's two names, nine people, three names. I know, I know my gazantas. So, um, and that's a Jethro Bodine for those of you who are my age, who know the gazantas. So, um, you will get the, you know, as many times three. But these are people th that want to have this virtual conversation on the class in the classroom. So you have to be available on January fourth <clears throat> from four to five p.m. Eastern time. <clears throat> okay, so you can start with this class and just say the emotion code, and I'll know that you are tagging people under my this particular class that's going to be um, today. You know, and then. Um, just make sure that you start the process of sharing, <coughs> excuse me, the uh, emotion code invitation. Okay. <coughs> okay, it's time for me to take some vitamin C or something because I've got a little cough. Anyway, just know that on January 29th, we're going to have the emotion code workshop. It's live. But this contest that we're doing you just need to share the flyer. So find the flyer, share the flyer. Let us know that you're sharing the flyer because we don't know. And you can tag three people too into that. So we're going to have a particular, I'm going to tell Brooke to post the flyer today so that you can share that flyer. That way you don't have to look all over for it. Okay. So I, before we go, I just want to close with one thing. And <clears throat> this is, this was given to me by Sarah. Sarah is a beautiful young lady. And she gave me, I don't know if you have ever read this book. I'm not getting money to say this, but she gave me this gift. She reads it to her children. And, um, and I just recently read it to my grandson, Jacob. And Jacob, he is a, he is a God-loving little boy. He is a Jesus lover, and he understands the stories so this is a story of three trees who had wishes. These three little trees, they had so many wishes and dreams. One tree wanted to be a treasure chest and have the biggest treasures in the world. <clears throat> the second tree wanted to be a ship and be able to take kings across the oceans. He wanted to be a huge ship. And the third one, wanted to be a, um, as tall, a tree as tall as a tree could be. And that's what the dreams were. But then these lumberjacks came and cut down the trees. And the first tree became a hay box to feed animals, a feeder. <clears throat> so look at the, this is the, the trees being cut down. The first box became a, um, a feeder for animals full of hay. The second one became a tiny little boat that only fit in the lake. It's so tiny. It could never stand the ocean to have the kings put in. And then the third one became a pile of lumber. And so I'm reading the story to my grandson and I turned the page because time went by time went by and the trees had forgotten their dreams and um and because they had forgotten their dreams and sometimes that happens to us too we forget what we want and what we're willing to do and what not to do <clears throat> and so what happened was and again we just need to trust the process we need to trust god's plan for our life but we got to work the plan too we can't just wait for God to do it all. And we just sit in our house watching television and distracting ourselves. We need to be in the moment and be ready for when God calls us to do whatever it is that God is calling us to do. So I turned the page and this is what ended up happening to the, the feeder box, the one with the hay. And when Jacob saw this picture, he got emotional. He realized that that's where baby Jesus was laid. And that's when the, the tree realized that 
that the, the one that wanted to be a treasure chest, that they had the biggest treasure ever, ever, is Jesus was laid in the manger and <clears throat> in this little box. And then the second one, I don't know if you remember this one. This is when Jesus calmed the lake just by saying peace. And so the second tree that wanted to be this huge ship so that he can take transport kings and queens realized that this little lake boat was able to transfer Jesus. And then the last one became where they hung Jesus on the cross. And so when they looked at that cross or the pole, they would think of God. That's what the third tree wanted. <clears throat> Sometimes we may not get what we want, but we get what we need. And as we are looking at 2022, I want us to focus on the things that we can let go of. I want to encourage you to join the workshop on January 14, 15, 16. And by the way, there's early registration for that one as well. So once we pass a certain date, <clears throat> the prices go up. And I love a good bargain. So take advantage of that. There's everything I do has purpose. Even the dancing. Yeah, I'm going to talk about the dancing again. Dance with me. And so... <clears throat> I want to encourage you to do whatever. If you want to release weight, if you want to give away, get, get all the baggage out of your life, if you want to be healthy for 2022, make it now. Make that commitment now and do whatever it takes. Join the classes. Do, do, do whatever. Go to whenyouneedafriend.com. Subscribe. Develop a, a community a community of people, of like-minded people. So when then you're having a day that is not becoming of you, then we can cheer you up and lift you up. So <clears throat> just know if things aren't working out for you as you thought they would, think again. If you embrace every moment and you're in the moment, that's where the magic happens. So I want to wish you all a happy, happy, happy holiday season. That means Christmas, New Year's, Epiphany, and whatever else you celebrate for people that just celebrated Hanukkah, for people that will celebrate Kwanzaa, whatever it is that you celebrate, celebrate and be in the moment. Be, you be the gift that you bring to the world. So thank you so much for watching today, share this video and let's start the process. And <clears throat> I think I'll, what I'll do is this, um, I'll have, I'll have um, the, the, the January 29th uh, emotion code flyer that you can tag this one too, but tag that one too. So tag that one and that way we'll know where you're tagging it and share it. See, see, God gives me what I need when I need it at the moment I need it. I love you all. I love you all, and I'm looking forward to seeing you on January 4th, um, and remember, I'm only a phone call or text away or email away, so let's stay connected during the holidays and remain true to yourself, and, and by the way, Sarah, thank you so much for this book. I love, I love gifts. I'm usually the one that's giving, but I love to receive as well, and so if you'd like to tithe, and use the, um, the, the, as one of the places that you're tithing, um, the, the, the classroom, I'm grateful for that too. I've never, I, I am so hard to ask. That was a lesson I needed to learn. It's okay to ask. You know, it doesn't mean that people have to give, but it's okay to ask. So I wanna encourage you to be mindful of what you need ask for what you need, be an observant of your life and see it in a new set of eyes as you step into 2022. May God bless you. May God bless every bit of moment of your life and that you become thirsty to learn more about the creator who created you, who lives in you. Merry Christmas. And please remember, I'll be right here waiting for you worldwide at whenyouneedafriend.com. This is Lillian McDermott wishing you love, peace, joy, and unexpected abundance. Make it the best day ever. Oh, and remember, Dr. Gramic is tomorrow, and we're going to be celebrating with her too.
The opinions and advice expressed on the Lillian McDermott Radio Show are intended for the individual callers and guests on the program and are presented to our wider audience solely for general educational purposes. Please act responsibly and consult personally with your own medical, psychological, or nutritional expert before taking any steps to improve your life.